Imagine lying in a hospital bed with your organs failing and you know someone poisoned you on purpose. Well, this was Maxwell Chikambuzo's nightmare in May 2021. Thank you for the concern, the love and support that you always show me. I just wanted to clear the rumors that I'm missing. I'm nowhere to be found. I'm very much alive as you can see. The Zimbabwean inventor was fighting for his life, not from an accident or illness, but from a targeted attack. And this was no first attempt, it was the third time someone allegedly tried to take him out because of what he invented. Seriously, what kind of invention could possibly make someone a target like that? Well, buckle up, because we're about to dive headfirst into a story that equal parts mind-blowing and mysterious. It's got free energy, presidential endorsements, missing prototypes, and a controversy that split the African tech world straight down the middle. Some people call Maxwell Chikambuzo a visionary genius. Others? a master of smoke and mirrors. And honestly, by the end of this, you might not even know what to believe. So who is this guy? And why would anyone want to poison him? Let's rewind. Maxwell Sangulani Chikambuzo was born on November 10th, 1980 in Mazo, Zimbabwe. He grew up in Kuwadzana, a working class suburb of Harare. And right from the start, his life didn't follow the usual path. He left school at just 14, 14, while most of us were worrying about teenage crushes or trying not to embarrass ourselves in front of the class, Maxwell was, apparently, deep into DIY engineering. He never went to university, never studied at some elite tech institute. But he says he didn't need to because what guided him wasn't a textbook. It was something else. I was born in higher. a very poor family. I never... I did not manage to complete my, my education. I left school when I was from two second term due to some financial difficulties. I was raised by a single parent, my mom. Mm. Maxwell has always said his inspiration came from God, that his ideas were delivered through prayer, that his ability to build the impossible was divine. Uh, later after, I discovered that there was something in me. I started to see visions and up to until now, I see visions, very clear visions, not even when I'm not asleep. Mm. Those are some of the things that I see. And Even the name of his company, Save Technologies, comes from a biblical phrase he says he received on a mountain during prayer. Thus saith the Lord. And for a long time, he was unknown. Just another guy tinkering in the and, background. And uh, God started to teach me. I believe God started to teach me. I could hear voices. I started to experiment with some electronic components. No one ever taught me what we the names and the, u the uses of electronic components, it was God. My first breakthrough was in 1999 when I did the first radio broadcasting transmitter in Kwazana. Mm, it made the headlines on both the national television, news, and also some radio stations. After He built a radio broadcast system back in 1999. It was a revolutionary, but it was a start. Then, his focus shifted big time. He became obsessed with energy. Not coal, not solar, not wind. Something else. Something much more radical. Free energy. Energy pulled from thin air. Energy that if real could upend the global economy overnight. Unlimited power, for free, from the environment around us. No gas stations, no electric bills, no burning fossil fuels. And then, it happened. On July 20th, 2015, Maxwell Chikambuzo went public in the most jaw-dropping way imaginable. His company, Sayeth Technologies, hosted what they called an open day. Journalists were invited. Cameras ruled. And what they revealed? It started like something out of science fiction. An electric car that never needed charging. A power generator that ran without fuel. A helicopter. A drone all supposedly powered by a microscopic energy device that pulled energy from radio frequencies floating in the air. Just imagine that for a second. A world where your car powers itself. Your home runs without ever being plugged in. Entire cities lit up without burning a single drop of oil or coal. If his tech actually worked, it would change everything. Not just a cool invention. Not just some breakthrough. We're talking civilization altering. Bigger than the smartphone. Bigger than the internet maybe even bigger than the discovery of electricity itself. Unsurprisingly, the media in Africa went wild. Headlines declared him a genius, a game changer, a trailblazer breaking the laws of physics. Social media exploded with support. People felt inspired, empowered, 
There was this huge sense of pride this feeling that an African inventor was about to shake the world. But that moment didn't last. Because after that explosive 2015 demonstration, things got quiet. Too quiet. The inventions? They were never seen again. The electric car? Chikambutsa later said he dismantled it. It's gone. Doesn't exist anymore. The helicopter and the drone? He acknowledged that they couldn't actually fly outside the lab or work in uncontrolled condition. The generator? Never made it to market. Never tested by independent experts. Year after year, he made promises. That mass production was right around the corner. That investors were on board. That partnerships were being finalized. That everything was coming together. But somehow, it never happened. Always soon. Always in development. Always almost ready. And that's when the questions started. The critics started digging. Because here's the thing about free energy. According to mainstream science, it's impossible. The laws of thermodynamics say you can't pull energy from nothing. Yes, there are radio frequencies in the air, but they carry such tiny amounts of energy that powering even a light bulb, let alone a car, is wildly unrealistic. And when Maxwell was pressed for answers, the details got fuzzy. He spoke about sonic pressure waves in the ether of space ambient energy from astronomical bodies. Terms that sound complex and scientific until you realize that none of it has ever been peer-reviewed. No schematics. No lab report. No independent demonstrations. Nothing verifiable. And that brings us to May 2021. Maxwell Chikambruzzo is rushed to the hospital. He's in critical condition. His kidneys and liver are failing. And according to his company, this wasn't just bad luck, it was an attempt on his life. They said he'd been poisoned. And not just once this was allegedly the third attempt. Three times, someone tried to take him out, according to the narrative. In a LinkedIn post from early 2022, Matchwell wrote that he spent most of 2021 in the hospital recovering from poisoning. He said it nearly killed him, but he wasn't giving up. Either we win, he said, or we die trying to make the world a better place. That wasn't just dramatic language. He meant it. He believed people were actively trying to kill him for what he knew. His company went even further. They claimed to have received threats on Facebook, via email, through encrypted messages. Threats of death. Threats to his family. Threats to destroy everything he was working on. And it was all, they said, because of his wireless energy tech. So who is behind these supposed attacks? Well, that part's murky. Supporters have theories. Obvious ones. Big oil billion-dollar utility companies, fossil fuel giants, people with a lot to lose if free energy ever became a reality. If someone could power a city from a shoebox-sized device, those industries would collapse overnight. So yeah, if you believe Maxwell, there's definitely a motive. But here's the part that frustrates a lot of people. There's no hard proof, no arrests, no medical records released to confirm poisoning, no police reports, just claims. Stories. Allegations. Which brings us to the deeper question. Is there really a global conspiracy to stop him? Or is the poisoning story just another chapter in a narrative that explains why, 10 years later, no working product has materialized? On one side, there's a self-taught inventor from Zimbabwe who says he cracked the code to free energy. He's faced threats, survived multiple poisoning attempts allegedly, and has a growing list of believers backing him every step of the way. On the other, a decade of headlines and no device, no schematics, no mass production, no independent testing, just shifting explanations, missing prototypes, and a lot of unanswered questions. So what's the truth? Was Maxwell Chikambutso really poisoned? Did someone try to silence him because of what he built? Or is this all part of a bigger narrative one that's compelling, mysterious, and just believable enough to keep hope alive?